Okay, so let's uh, talk about power. Remember, power the power of a hypothesis test is the chance that you avoid type 2 error given that the alternative hypothesis is true for, a, for some particular value of the parameter in question. Let's uh, take a look at a brief little example for, say, um, means. If, if I'm doing a hypothesis test for means, and I have uh, something set up like this, uh, that the population mean is equal to uh, 10, and maybe the alternative hypothesis is that the is um, is that whoops, the the mean is actually greater than 10. Okay. Now here's the idea. Suppose suppose that mu is actually really and truly equal to 20. Okay. Power is a function of the actual value of the mean, which you'll never know, okay? But the idea is that you might want to say, well, if the actual value is really 20, what's the chance that I'm going to detect that with this test, okay? So here's sort of the idea. Um, if this is 10 and this is 20, okay? I know from uh, my, my uh, first statistics course that, you know, um, this normal curve here, uh, this is the behavior, behavior of um, the sample mean, okay, maybe um, the random sample mean is going to tend to adhere to this kind of a behavior if H0 is true. And um, This curve, maybe this is the behavior of the sample mean if um, mu really equals 20, which implies that HA is true, okay? There are a lot of ways for the, the alternative hypothesis to be true in this case, but uh, certainly 20 will, will get us there. Okay, so uh, for all this to 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 come to be, we have to set some alpha level, okay? Alpha, maybe it's 5%, okay? The idea here is, uh, you know, power, we can't really talk about power unless we have a decision to make, uh, because, you know, when you make a decision, then um, only then, um, when you decide to, to reject or, or fail to reject the null is when you can actually make any kind of an error. So. You need some sort of a threshold there, right? So the so type one error will will occur if the null hypothesis is actually true, but you end up getting a sample such that you reject the null. Okay, so this uh, this is your rejection region. From here all the way over, right? This will be your rejection region. However. Now, if um, if the alternative is actually true for the specific value of 20, that is, if the mean is really here, then this is actually how the sample mean is going to behave, right? So when will you actually reject H0? You're going to reject H0 if, the, uh, if, your, if your sample mean hits here or above. But what's the probability of that now? Well, if this is really the way it behaves, then the chance is really going to be this. Okay, so all of this area, including this blue area here, this um, this area here is the power. That's what that is. And we, we like for tests to have high power because tests with high power indicate that um, that, that that we have a high detection probability. Um, if the if our research hypothesis, which is our alternative, the thing that we would maybe sort of like to try to prove or uh, come up with a bunch of evidence for, um, uh, and we we'd like to be able to detect that if that's in fact the case. Okay, so let's talk with respect to doing hypothesis tests for the slope uh, coefficient for uh, simple regression line. So let's suppose that my null hypothesis is that beta 1 equals 0, and maybe my alternative hypothesis is that um, I know beta 1 is uh, less than 0. We'll start off with a left-tailed test. and um, So we'll have to set alpha for this to make sense, for the same reason 
up here. So suppose that, suppose beta 1 really, that's really, equals some number, say, beta alpha, or beta A, sorry, for the actual value, or, you know, the, the one that goes along with the alternative hypothesis, okay, um, uh, which is, uh, say, less than zero, okay? Then, um, it should be that our, our, our guess for beta 1 minus beta A all over the standard error for beta 1, um, this thing behaves according to a T distribution with uh, n minus 2 degrees of freedom, okay? This is the way it, that this test statistic really and truly behaves. So then, then this tells me how to write down my power expression. Um, the power is going to be, uh, it's the probability of, well, let's see, that uh, my, my test statistic there is B1 minus zero, right? The, the, the value under the null hypothesis over the standard error. It's the chance that that quantity falls to the left of T of um, uh, well, the alpha percentile right, minus two degrees of freedom, given, however, that B1 minus beta A over S, uh, over the, the standard error, is what's actually behaving like a T distribution. Okay, so I'm conditioning on the, the actual behavior of this quantity, but note that you'll reject, <clears throat> you'll reject H0 if and only if this quantity falls to the left of that uh, of that mark falls into the rejection region. Okay, so um, so this is the key step I think to figuring out these power problems. Um, so once I'm here, what I want to do is I want to adjust the stuff on the left hand side so that it sort of course so that it coincides with this. I want to get a probability expression for this kind of thing because I know that this thing behaves like a T. So you know this zero this zero just goes away, right? It's not really there, so let's do this. Let's say um, B1 over S of B1, and then maybe we could just uh, subtract beta A over S of B1 from both sides. This is a T number, um, all right, like this. Subtract beta A over S of B1 given that B1 minus beta A over S of B1 behaves like a T. Minus two, okay. So, see, this and this, these are the same, okay? Okay, this stuff behaves like a T random variable. So I just wanna know what's the chance that this stuff, which should behave like a T random variable with n minus two degrees of freedom, falls to the left of this T mark, but minus all of this stuff. Okay. Now, in a problem, um, you know, you might need to know, uh, have a good estimate for the for the standard error there, S of B one, and you can just stick that number right in there and compute this. We'll do an example in a minute, but. Um, uh, what if you have a right-tailed test? What if, uh, for example, H0 was that uh, beta 1 is 0 and HA is that uh, beta 1 is greater than 0? Then, of course, you know, set alpha and then uh, suppose um, uh, beta 1 is, you know, your slope is really and truly equal to some number beta A. This is really, really, okay, um, then, of course, B1 minus beta A over the standard error, this, this thing behaves like a T distribution with uh, N minus 2 degrees of freedom, and your power will be, remember, I think this is the, the key step, this is the 
the tricky thing here. It's the chance. In this case, remember, you're going to reject the null if, if your test statistic gets too far to the right because you're doing a right tail test. So B1, you're going to, you're standardizing your, your best guess here, which is, but you're standardizing uh, with respect to the, the value in the null. So it's minus zero over S of B1. It's the chance that that thing exceeds that T number. And what's the T number now? Well, um, one minus alpha, right? Alpha is your, uh, uh, alpha is your type one error probability. And so now that error probability is going to situate itself in the right tail. So I'm looking for the one minus alpha times 100th percentile. So one minus alpha is the area to the left, right? Left, right? Left. It's the area to the left, right? Okay, so, but this is all conditioned on that, you know, can I just say that goes in there? Okay, now I'm going to play the same trick. I'm going to make uh, both sides, I'm going to make this stuff look like that stuff so that I can have a probability statement about a t random variable. Okay, um, this is the chance that, uh, you know, b1 over s b1, uh, what do I have to do here? I guess uh, uh, minus um, beta a again over s of b1. That's what it is. It's greater than t of 1 minus alpha with n minus 1 degrees of freedom minus beta a over s of b1. Okay, given again all that same stuff. And there you go. Okay, you just need to, you know, you, you, you you'll get this from from your from your sample. This will be some number you can probably maybe you can guess at. This is some number. Um, power is actually so power is actually a function of of this number here. Okay, you could set that number to whatever you like, and you'll see that your your your, your power will will um it will change. Is this is this number gets farther and farther away from zero, then uh, the test will get more powerful. That sort of makes sense because uh, if 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 beta one really is not zero, if it's really far away from zero, then it should be pretty easy to to, to detect that. You're going to probably get a sample that that says that. So let's take a look at an example. Let's take a look at an example real quick. Back to this used cars uh, data set. Um, suppose that beta one is in fact equal to negative five, indicating that cars actually tend to drop in value at a rate of five hundred dollars per year. Remember the units here are hundred dollar bills um, per year on on your beta one. And say so, let's say we set your um, your the significance level would be 5%, so you'll reject H0 in favor of HA if your uh, test of, if your p-value falls less than 5%, okay? And uh, so we're doing a left-tailed test here, right? Um, so, um, so B1 is, you know, the, 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 the value I'm going to get um, from, from my, you know, this is the my sample sort of uh, slope coefficient minus this is this uh, this number here is my beta a okay and I'm going to um, divide by this now this I don't know so but maybe suppose based on past experience we we uh, uh, you know the, the standard deviation is is thought to be about two okay so maybe you could sub that in there. So I'm not. I'm now just going to sub into that uh, all that work that I did previously, but for a left-tailed test. Okay, like this. The two goes there. Right. This is a, a less than. It's a left-tailed test. T value. This is my uh, significance level here. Um, this goes here. Right. This is how. Right. If I take this minus minus, this is b1 plus five over that. B1 plus five over two. This has a t distribution with eight degrees of freedom. 
Now I play the little trick, right? And I add 5 over 2 to both sides, okay? Both sides here, both sides here. So I want to know the chance that this thing, which is a t random variable, falls to the left of this mark plus that mark. And you can get that with this function in, in R. This is R code, okay? R code. So look, uh, to get the, the, it's the CDF, right? Because I want to know the chance that it falls to the left of a certain mark under a T distribution. Okay, here's a T distribution like this. So um, if I do like this, if this is if this is some mark there, then if I want to get this area with R, it's uh, P. T probability, I think, probability function uh, for a T curve. Uh, it's a cumulative probability function up to uh, smiley face with the degrees of freedom there, like that. Okay, and that's what we have there, P, PT of stuff, comma, 8 degrees of freedom. N was 10, so 10 minus 2 is 8. Uh, this mark here, then, is, is all this stuff, right? Here's the, the five halves five halves. Now this is my, my my T number here, okay? I'm finding the, uh, the I guess, that is that uh, quantile or something? I'm not sure what the Q stands for there, but it's, it gets the, it gets the, uh, the percentiles, okay? I'm looking for the fifth percentile of a T distribution um, with eight degrees of freedom. That's exactly what, what that is, okay? And you should get this.